Number 20. Suppose a 60 kilogram gymnast climbs a rope. What is the tension in the rope if he climbs at a constant speed? All right, so first, a free body diagram. So let's draw a set of axes, okay? And this particular point in the middle, right, right, will represent the gymnast, okay? So what are the forces that are acting on the gymnast currently? Right? Remember, we can also think about this thing being the rope, okay? And this is just a particular point on the rope where he is. So, what's, uh, so one force is the force due to gravity, right? The weight of the gymnast himself. So how do we define that? Well, we define that as uh, W is equal to mg. Now remember, it's going to be negative, all right, because it's pointing down. All right, so that's great. Now, if there's a, if there's a force pointing down, right, they're most likely climbing on the rope. The rope is, uh, is experiencing an equal, not an equal. Well, it depends if there's, it's in equilibrium or not, right? But uh, the rope is probably experiencing an opposite force in the other way. All right, so we have now a vector going up. And this will represent the tension, okay, that's in the string. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, wonderful. Now, let's take that other piece of information. It says that he climbs at a constant speed. What does that mean? Well, it just means that his velocity doesn't change, right? So he's climbing up the rope here, right? So he's traveling upwards, okay? His velocity, his change in velocity, I should say, his change in velocity is zero. Okay, but in terms of forces and whatnot, what's the important variable? Is it velocity or is it acceleration? It's acceleration, right? So although he is traveling with a certain velocity, his change in velocity is zero, and therefore, remember, the acceleration is zero. Okay, why? Because acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over the change in time. So zero in the numerator gives you a zero value overall. Okay, so now we have enough information we need in order to figure this out. Okay, so this is a y problem. Remember, all y problems are, yeah, assuming, assuming, the, assuming the object has mass, right, all problems in the y direction, you always want to consider the weight of the object. Okay, so some of the forces in the y direction should equal the mass times the acceleration in that y direction. So what are the forces in the y? Well, we detailed it in the picture, right? There's a tensional force pointing up, so it's positive. And then there's a weight, or mg, right? Because they're the same thing pointing down. So subtract mg here. And that should equal then the mass times the acceleration in the y. So let's start plugging some values in, right? So t, I don't know what it is. The mass of this uh, gymnast is 60.0, right? Gravity is 9.80. And then over here, the mass is uh, 60 again, but I mean, I don't even have to write that because what's the acceleration? It's zero, right? So that whole term goes to zero, okay? And then in order to solve for t, right, I would just be adding this term on over to that side, right? So t will equal, once I add it over, it becomes positive and it's 60 times 9.8. So 588, so 588 newtons. That would be the tension, over and done with. So part A is finished. Now part B. Okay, so let's go back and read part B. So it says, what is the tension in the rope if he accelerates upward at a rate of 1.5 meters per second squared? I sometimes feel if I pause a little bit on this question, it emphasizes a certain you know, thing there and it'll click a little better, but it probably doesn't. So anyway, um, don't mind me. So here, we have our free body diagram. Now, what's going on with this gymnast? Well, again, it's, he's climbing up a rope, so he still has a weight. So that weight doesn't change, right? Your weight doesn't change if you're stationary or climbing up a rope. Otherwise, when I wanna feel good about myself, I would climb up a rope and the scale would be less, right? But if you are accelerating upward, obviously there's less force pointing down on the scale. So I guess you would be a little less, but in terms of then, uh, it's only relative though. If the scale is moving with you, it's not at the same acceleration, it's not gonna change. Anyway, okay, I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm, I'm losing it today. Okay, so the weight is equal to mg, fair enough. Okay, same thing as before. And the rope still has a tensional force, right? Pointing upward, that hasn't changed yet. Well, that hasn't changed at all, okay? 
there's still an opposite force opposing the weight. The only difference here now is that there is an acceleration. Okay, so there is something going upwards or positive. All right, and that acceleration in that y direction, and I'm just going to write the little positive sign there just to make sure we're, we don't forget that, is 1.50 meters per second squared. So guess what? We got enough that we need, right? We know what we need. I just got to label that T. That's what we're looking for. And now how do I relate these things together? Again, it's the same thing. Let's use the formula, right? Some of the forces are Newton's second law here. Some of the forces in the y direction will equal the mass times the acceleration in that y direction. So what are the forces? There's the tensional force, and then there's a negative mg. That will equal may. Let's start plugging some stuff in. So the tension minus the mass we said was 60. Gravity is 9.80. The mass, again, is not hasn't changed. It's still 60. And then the acceleration this time is not to zero, is a positive 1.50. Okay, so how do we solve? Simply just take this value, add it on over to this whole value. All right, so I'm just going to do that all in one step here, save a little time. So we got 60 times 1.5 plus 60 times 9.8. 678. So we get 678 newtons. Okay, and that is now the tension in the rope when the uh, gymnast accelerates upward. And that should make sense, right? I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it, well, it might make sense in one, in one sense, but it might not in another. You might say, well, I'm accelerating up, so why is the force getting greater going up? Well, because how are you accelerating upwards? You're pulling down on the rope even harder, correct? If you're accelerating up, you've got to pull down even harder on that rope. And therefore, there should be more tension in that rope. All right, that would be the proper way to think about it. Any case, guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. Uh, please remember to subscribe, and I will uh, see you in the next lesson. Thank you.